Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much for joining us on Cognac Expert today. My name is Rebecca Asselin, and I am Courvoisier UK Brand Ambassador. Uh, we are here today live into Harrods wine tasting shop, um, which has been actually dressed into, for the very first time, or l'Atelier de Courvoisier. L'Atelier de Courvoisier is a part of a bigger concept, identity, that we've created called the Alchemy, which refers to all the different steps of the making of our cognacs, um, regrouping all the history, heritage, skills and raw elements that allow us to produce year after year or liquid gold. And uh, today, you will be taken through within the next half an hour um, a wonderful tasting with our six master blenders since 1902, Patrice Pinet, who's given us the honor to join us today, who will um, provide us with a fantastic live tasting of one of our very precious and very limited edition uh, Succession JS. Uh, you will then have a Q&A, um, so some of you guys have sent some questions that Patrice will be delighted to answer. And uh, the last part will be unveiling one of the eldest known bottle of a blend of Courvoisier dating back to the French Revolution in 1789. So again, this is a real pleasure to have you all with us and for you to be able to uh, discover our Atelier de Courvoisier and all the alchemy behind it. And, uh, uh, I will leave you now with uh, and introduce you to our master blender, Patrice Pinet, who is the man responsible uh, for reproducing year after year um, all our beautiful blends, all our expressions from the ongoing ones and also our limited ones. Patrice is very much the heart of our house, so this is a pleasure for me to introduce to you. Patrice Pinet, welcome. Thank you very much for being here yeah. with us today. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Rebecca, and thanks for this introduction. Yes, it's a true uh, great pleasure for me to be there. Uh, in Harrods in London today to share our experience in blends, to share our experience also uh, about a um, beautiful bottle we produced in the past. So uh, it's the occasion also to speak about our history here in London. And for me, it's a great pleasure to share this experience with consumers also. Thanks. Perfect. So, um, Patrice, if you agree, um, uh, if you actually can uh, introduce us to your uh, succession, that would be uh, quite fantastic. We have a beautiful cabinet next to you, and I think lots of people might be quite interested in discovering what's happening with, uh, within it. Yes, it's interesting to speak about succession, because succession is a part of our history. Uh, it's a limited edition uh, we launched some years ago uh, to celebrate our uh, strong uh, and long relationship with Napoleon's family. Uh, Courvoisier is well known around the world to be the cognac de Napoleon. And uh, that's true to uh, celebrate this history. Uh, we decided to launch a special uh, cabinet and a special bottle uh, to uh, describe this uh, long history. Uh, this cabinet is the reproduction on one third scale of one cabinet we have in our museum in Jarnac in France, uh, in the Cognac area. Uh, we purchased this cabinet uh, in 1954 in an auction in Fontainebleau, uh, which is uh, the chateau uh, where Napoleon was living uh, in the 19th century. And uh, this uh, cabinet is very special. Uh, we call it the chest of secrets of Napoleon I uh, because it was uh, made in a mahogany wood with a double panel uh, to protect against bullets. Between the two panels of wood you have lead uh, to protect against bullets on fire. And uh, the doors uh, are in, uh, with ebony wood around the doors and you have also brass uh, on the corner to protect the cabinet. So it's a very special cabinet and we produced it in third, one third scale. We found very good craftsmen in France to be able to reproduce it. And one key piece of this cabinet is this one, is the key. And the key is a masterpiece because uh, it was uh, made uh, by a, a craftsman in the 19th century, uh, able to uh, reproduce the initial of Napoleon Bonaparte, the N and the B on the key, plus a four leaves clover, uh, that, mean lux, uh, that, that means luck, and uh, for Napoleon it was very important. And uh, we were able to uh, reproduce this key and to use this key uh, to open a, a master lock in three pieces, as you can see. And inside, uh, we have a beautiful bottle uh, with the N and the crown of Napoleon. 
This bottle was one of the first bottles uh, produced in Courvoisier in a uh, large scale uh, at the end of the 19th century. And uh, we think it was interesting also to, uh, to have this bottle in the cabinet uh, to speak uh, about this relationship with Napoleon. The end of the crown, uh, Napoleon was crowned, in, uh, was crowned in 1804, so more than two centuries ago. And uh, Napoleon I visited us in 1811 uh, in Bercy, uh, in the suburbs of Paris. Uh, to, um, it was the first visit of him uh, with, uh, in Courvoisier Cellars to, uh, to supply uh, cognac for its court. And uh, it was interesting to know that he was visiting us because uh, he was invited by Louis Galois, the mayor of Bercy. And it was uh, a great uh, event uh, permitting to uh, Courvoisier, uh, associated with Louis Galois, to develop his business and to decide to establish their headquarters in cognac area to control very well the supply of their, uh, of their cognac. And finally, uh, Napoleon III, the nephew of Napoleon I, uh, delivered to Courvoisier in 1869 the official diploma uh, we can see in our museum today uh, to be the official supplier of the court of Napoleon. And given also the authorization to associate the name of Courvoisier and the name of Napoleon. You can see on the bottle here, on the label, Courvoisier, le cognac de Napoleon. It was a great uh, opportunity for us uh, to celebrate our brand and to uh, continue to push our cells uh, around the world, associating the name of Napoleon and the name of Courvoisier. And um, in the bottle, uh, to celebrate this also this uh, long relationship with our history, uh, we decided to, uh, to have a very special blend. Uh, inside the bottle, of course, uh, we wanted also to celebrate our wine growers. Uh, our history is linked to Napoleon's family, but our history is also linked with wine growers. In uh, our process, one key uh, important point is to check the quality at the beginning. And in Courvoisier, we are very um, uh, meticulous and we want to, to, to control each step of the process. And the first step, uh, vineyard and collect of grapes, is very, very important. And we have long relationship, long contracts with some uh, suppliers. And uh, we, for one of them, uh, we decided to purchase uh, his uh, reserve. Uh, it constitutes from the beginning of the 20th century, from 1900 to un until 1950s. And uh, we had a beautiful reserve from Grand Champagne to prepare this blend. So it was um, a great opportunity also uh, to do a very special blend from one cru, from uh, one, uh, one family, uh, to have uh, this limited edition. We produce this, this uh, bottle for only 2,500 bottles, so a very limited quantity. So, Patrice. I, yes, <laughs> I, I spoke a lot about our history, this masterpiece, uh, this which furniture, is very, which is very important uh, this bottle, succession. the link with Napoleon, uh, and of course, what is interesting to, uh, to speak about is, uh, is the blend. You can see on the cabinet we put uh, some glasses also with the end on the crown and these glasses are very important for us because these glasses are the glasses we use in our testing committee uh, to, uh, it, to, yes, to control the quality of our cognacs and uh, every day along the year uh, we are eight people around the table to test uh, young, dis young, just distilled spirits old spirits in order to be sure that we have the good ingredients to do our blends. So for this one, uh, for this limited edition, we decided to launch it with four glasses of, uh, with the end on the crown to um, highlight the quality of the aromas of this blend. Uh, this blend was coming from one very small estate uh, in the uh, center of Grand Champagne, Bonneuil, uh, where we purchased so a stock, uh, a very good eau de vie from one of our wine growers. Uh, this wine grower, uh, it's a family in link with Courvoisier for m about more than one century. Mm. And this family, uh, unfortunately for them, decided to stop their activity. But they had a beautiful stock, uh, and uh, they decided to sell this beautiful stock to their main supplier, their main uh, uh, client, customer, <laughs> I can say, Courvoisier. And uh, we purchased this stock, and we did a beautiful blend from uh, the beginning of the yes, 20th century until 1950s. And uh, you can see the beautiful mahogany uh, color of this cognac. Mm -hmm. and, uh, as it is an old cognac, we like to, to breathe it a little bit uh, in order to, uh, to extract aromas and to wait for aromas some seconds. 
And if you take uh, this, uh, this cognac on your, uh, close to your nose, this uh, glass close to your nose, you can, uh, you can have a lot of aromas, a large array of aromas, and especially one aroma we call uh, in, in cognac, uh, rancho. A rancho is always very difficult to translate, but you have that kind of aromas with all port wines, all sherry wines, and it's, uh, uh, it's a combination of esters and hair, and which give which deliver this aroma after a long, long period of aging. A bit of candied fruits that you get. Uh, after, yes, you mm -hmm. have candied fruit, candied orange, and you have all uh, very sweet aromas as hot honey, liquorice, which are arriving step by step. But depending on your own background, mm -hmm. your own uh, childhood, and your, if you spend time with your mother or your grandmother in the, in the kitchen, maybe you have some other aromas uh, you have in mind to, to celebrate this, uh, this quality and to speak about this quality. So it's very, very yeah. rich. And I really wish that uh, our viewers there could actually smell what I'm smelling just now. This is absolutely fantastic. And what I recommend of, to test that kind of cognac is to sip it in a very uh, small um, quantities, uh, step by step, to appreciate all the quality and all the aromas also in mouth. It's always a pleasure for me, even <laughs> if I test it a lot of, lot of times. So, yeah. It's a great pleasure because it's mellow, smooth, and uh, it's very, very full-bodied. And uh, you have um, the taste in your mouth, even if you sip in a very small quantity. Um, it's explo it explodes in your, in, in your mouth, and it stays for a long period of time. So you don't forget it in uh, one minute. You have, you have it for a, a long, long, time. long, long time. So the linger so is incredible. Is there any particular, particular ways or time of the day, um, a particular condition that you would advise people to actually enjoy that? Yeah, this cognac, you have also, uh, if you are a cigar lover, you have also ah. beautiful... Uh, there we go. You have very beautiful uh, aromas of cigar leaves, cigar box, which are arriving. And uh, from my point of view, uh, if it's, it's a perfect cognac for the night, for after dinner, to have a great pleasure with friends. Uh, if you are not a cigar lover, if you are a chocolate lover... That works just as well. That's, mm -hmm. that's well, very well too. And uh, that's nice to have it. Uh, Need like that for a long dinner because you sip it very slowly. So it's a just to enjoy. Yeah, just by to the minute. enjoy. Just and again, enjoy. it evolves a lot, isn't it? Yeah. As a, as as it gets to breathe, etc. So it's important to let it breathe and take the time. And more, more you breathe it, more you smell it, more you appreciate it, and more you sip it, more you appreciate it also. So yeah. Oh, and that's fantastic. Well, as you do just that, I would actually take you through um, a few questions that were sent via Cognac Experts in Twitter from some of the, the viewers today, I assume. So um, feel free to enjoy yeah, this as you. we go along with yeah. the different questions. So as an example, I'll have here Miles who's asking, how long did you have to train before you mm. became a master blender? Interesting question. Um, you know, I've been working for Courvoisier for 24 years and I can say that I trained 20 years. Uh, I trained 20 years because I had different positions in the company, but mm -hmm. I began also to be a member of the testing committee from the origin. So uh, working with my, colleague, uh, my colleagues in the testing committee and working especially with master distiller, uh, the previous master blender too, I learned step by step my job. So uh, it was a long process uh, and in fact I began, I began to learn when I arrived in Courvoisier 24 years ago. Fantastic. That's amazing. We have another question from Monsieur Cognac this time, which is, how many eau de vie are there in succession, Jess? As exp I explained previously, um, this stock, this reserve, uh, was made from the beginning of the 20th century until the 1950s. In uh, wine growers in Cognac area are producing uh, co um, wines first. Mm -hmm. They are distilling their wines in their own pot stills, if they are bouillot de cru, and they um, they steal the wines and they, they, put, they sell their young Adobe to different companies, and mm -hmm. uh, in this case for Courvoisier. And also they distill for uh, themselves to edge in their own farms uh, and to keep stocks in their own farms. From time to time, they sell a reserve. This reserve uh, was uh, normally the, each year uh, they select one batch that they continue to edge in their own farm for, the, for themselves. 
In that case, uh, from, from the beginning of the 20th century until 1950s, they had about 30 different batches. So in this blend, for only 2,500 bottles, bottles uh -huh. uh, you have small, sometimes you have 10 liters or one demi -john, 30 liters for, for one year, more for another year, but we have about 30 different batches. Thank you. Uh, we have now another question from Champagne Le Champ, which is, is it possible to say champagne on a cognac given uh, that this word is protected? Yeah. It's a very interesting question. Uh, you can see here in the bottle in this wall uh, that uh, we have time to time. Just here, oh, yeah, yes. yes. We have some eau de vie in cognac. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have time to time on the label, grand champagne, petit champagne, or thin champagne. And that's true, you never have champagne itself. Uh, champagne is a name in France of a very well-known region for sparkling wine mm -hmm. and uh, very well-known all around the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, champagne, in fact, means that you have a very chalky soil and you have different regions in, in France with the name of champagne. But in terms of appellation d'origine contrôlée, the regulation which control uh, the spirits and wines in France, uh, there is only one region with champagne, Champagne de Reims, where you produce these sparkling wines. But you have other cru, other regions which have this authorization for cognac. And in cognac area, you have two crus, Grand Champagne with very chalky soil, mm -hmm. and Petit Champagne. Uh, champagne, yes, means that it uh, fills where you have a lot of shore, lo a lot of, of limestones, a lot of layers, mm -hmm. yes. And you have two areas in Cognac region which have this name, Grand Champagne and Petit Champagne. And if we blend, if you blend 50% uh, uh, of Grand Champagne plus Petit Champagne, you obtain also a thin Champagne. So uh, this is an interesting question. So we have uh, this authorization also in Cognac area to speak about Champagne, Grand, Petit and Thin. Thank you, Patrice. And uh, now, a uh, last one from Monsieur Le Drink, which is, do you think it's wrong to mix all the Cognac over six years mm -hmm. with other ingredients, such as in a cocktail? Okay. Uh, do you have, do you <laughs> have the, uh, interesting yes, question do you have the advice on the master blender yourself? Uh, yes. I can tell you that 50 years ago, it was wrong to, uh, to put cognac in a cocktail, even if it was young. Uh, now, uh, in, f in fact, it was not totally true. In 1950s, it was very common to dilute cognac with water, for instance, or with sparkling uh, mm -hmm. water, or the cells. So, uh, why not to mix cognac with something else? And in fact, uh, we like to use a young cognac for floral aromas, uh, for to prepare some cocktails mm -hmm. with fruits, especially uh, with fruit juice or with uh, sodas. We, you can you can prepare very beautiful cocktails. But with very old cognac, you have to be an expert. And why not? Uh, yesterday uh, in uh, in London, uh, I saw that we can prepare a very uh, interesting cocktail with very old vintage, but you have to be an expert of mixology. And very good mixologist can blend a old cognac with uh, some liqueurs or some wines or champagne or. Uh, and in that case, it could be interesting. You have to consider that to prepare a very good meal, you have you need to have very good ingredients. Mm -hmm. And if you want to do uh, an outstanding cocktail, you need to also to have outstanding ingredients. So why not? Uh, but you have to be careful on what you use and what is your target on the cocktail. If you want to do very, something very special, very good, why not? I try sometimes and it's, it could be very good, but you have to be careful. So bartenders, if some of you are out there, I'm bringing my master blender very soon, so uh, be aware. Thank you very much, Patrice, that's fantastic. Uh, thank you. The, the next part, which is very, very exciting for us, and I think for you, uh, considering that uh, a few days ago was the first time that you saw that bottle yourself, mm. uh, we have here in Harrods, exclusively, uh, from a, a collector um, back in Holland, Mr. Van den Bert, who's been uh, uh, kind enough to bring this bottle in Harrods, uh, a blend uh, dating back to, or having some cognacs dating back to 1789, which is pretty much the eldest blend that you've ever come across as it comes to yeah. our house of Courvoisier yeah. and so the Curlier great. brothers. So, um, so what, what I would do, uh, if you don't mind, is actually yeah. invite you to go closer to the bottle so viewers can have a look I will at take, the bottle I will itself. take my glass with me to continue to... Of course. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you may. <laughs> Okay, this bottle is uh, amazing. Uh, it's the first time I saw this bottle uh, two days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's, that's nice for me to see this bottle here 
in London especially. I told you that our history is linked with uh, Napoleon, but our history also is important here in London, because in 1909, uh, Courvoisier was uh, sold to an English family, the Simon family, uh, the best friends of the Courvoisier family. Uh, Courvoisier family didn't have any sons and daughters. They had only nephews, and that's why you can see on this uh, label Courvoisier and Curlier. Mm -hmm. Curlier were the nephews of uh, Courvoisier, Miss Courvoisier, married with Mr. Curlier. Uh, this family never had also succession. And uh, as they uh, had uh, their distributor here in London, uh, they decided to sell their company in 1909 to uh, this Simon family. And the Simon family uh, was in charge to sell Courvoisier in UK from the beginning of the uh, 19th century. Mm -hmm. So that's why you can find here in UK, and especially in London, very old bottle of Courvoisier. And we have old bottles in, in our own cellar uh, mm -hmm. in Jarnac, but the old bottles we have, generally speaking, are ingredients to prepare a blend. And for me, it was the first time I saw a 1789 vintage uh, in a Corrosian Curlier bottle uh, here in London. And that's nice to, uh, to, to see this bottle. And you can see on the label also that uh, it, it is written old cognac. Mm -hmm. And why old cognac? Because Corrosian Curlier uh, established their headquarters in Jarnac in 1840s. Uh, in 1840s. And the name of Courvoisier of Cur and Curlier appeared in, on labels uh, in 1840s, 1850s. Mm -hmm. So the cognac inside the bottle from 1789, that means that this cognac was aged a long period of time in barrel before to be bottled. So wow. uh, in the bottle you have normally a cognac about 50 years mm -hmm. of aging, uh, 50 to 60 years of aging inside mm -hmm. the bottle. So it's a piece of history. Uh, you can see also the bottle itself. Uh, the bottle was not produced by the industry of glass because it was mm. not existing at this period of time. And you can see the light it reflection. It is beautiful. The light uh, is incredible. Uh, and you can it. see that it's a very mm. craftsman bottle too. Absolutely. And the level of liquid inside it, uh, of course you are not at the top of the bottle. Uh, that means that you had evaporation, mm -hmm. but not too much because, you know, uh, that means that this bottle was uh, conserved in a very good way. Uh, because uh, if you don't take care of the cork, for instance, or if you don't take care of the exposition to, uh, to light or to temperature, uh, temperature mm. you can have uh, much more evaporation. So in that case, that means that the guy, the person in charge to, to, uh, of this bottle, take care of this bottle, and uh, uh, this bottle arrived today here in Harrods in a very good condition, and it is in a special cabinet oh, with yes. air, air control <laughs> and temperature control, mm -hmm. humidity control, so uh, that's nice to see it in a so, so beautiful position. Wonderful. And so for some people who ask the question, sometimes, you know, they find an old bottle in a cellar. Um, I come across lots of people who ask that question and, and ask if you can keep a cognac once it's been bottled, um, if, if the blend itself or what's inside will move within time. If it's kept in the right conditions, you are saying that that shouldn't move too much. Yes, if it's kept in good condition, uh, you can have a very gorgeous cognac it's inside. Uh, in our own paradis, mm -hmm. in Courvoisier, uh, we have very old cognac from the 19th century. Uh, time to time, our testing committee controls the quality, and we have gorgeous quality, for instance, from 1865, which is a very old cognac, but kept in very good condition. It is always very good. And depending on the harvest, uh, depending on the maturation process this, bot this cognac followed, we can think it could be very good today. So, uh, what I would recommand, uh, I would recommend, no, no, but <laughs> maybe, you know, to, to, to continue to keep this bottle in mm -hmm. a good way, uh, maybe the owner will have to change the cork, again. maybe again. In in Courvoisier, we try, fun, yes, I nah, we, we try to change the corks every 30 years okay. in order not to have any problem with mm -hmm. too much evaporation, which can, uh, um, yes, not destroy, but which can, which can affect the quality of the product. Okay. So if you, when uh, the next owner, because I think this bottle will be sold at uh, 95,000 pounds, that's the price. Yes, yes that 95. is the price at Harrods, yes. Okay. Uh, unique bottle though, unique such bottle. a unique bottle. Uh, so maybe the next owner will change the cork, 
So when he will change the cork, I recommend to sip a small quantity just to, to have a, just to, um, to, to control, discover. The, to discover <laughs> and to have the pleasure. If, have, if he has purchased this bottle, to have the pleasure to test it a little bit, to have a flavor of what was cognac at the 18th century. Fantastic. And the other piece of collection of this cognac is uh, the cognac was made with another grape that, than we had today. Uh, we have Uni Blanc today to produce cognac as a grape. At this period of time, it was uh, Folle Blanche. Pre-phylloxera. Uh, mm. pre and uh, phylloxera was a disease which destroyed a uh, great part of the mm. cognac uh, vineyards. We had to replant uh, the vineyard with another variety, uh, Uni Blanc. We have time to time some, some mm, vineyards with Folle Blanche, but, but in very, very small quantity. Mm -hmm. And that's true that it's not uh, so common to have uh, uh, cognac coming from this period of time and with the original flavor of cognac from the 18th century. Fantastic. Thank you very, very much, Patrice. Thank you. Um, now, just to say that the Atelier of Courvoisier will be here until tomorrow night and that I will be around should people want to come about and have a look, have a tour, which I will uh, really happily explain. Um, again, this is a new experience for us and uh, this is taking you to Jarnac, where our chateau is, we hope at least, giving you lots of little details about how meticulous it is for uh, our house to make uh, the cognac. And it was quite extraordinary to have our, our master blender himself to explain to you further uh, all these details and how precious some of the liquids that we have are uh, nowadays. So we hope that you've enjoyed that as much as we had and uh, we wish you a wonderful day. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank, thank you, you Patrice. Thank you very much and uh, have a nice tasting with our succession or our bottle of Kobazi <laughs> you have in your, in your room. Thanks. Thank you.